you're six generations in. Yes, I am the sixth generation. My uh, great great grandfather and his parents actually planted the first vineyard here in the 1860s. Wow. And we still have um, several acres of that original vineyard that they planted back then. So we do have a wine named after my great great grandfather. You do? Rufus Red. Mm -hmm. Oh, get out and of here. And it has in it grapes from that original vineyard that's been here since the 1860s. So, because that's crazy. Like, that's the same line of flavor. Yeah, actually, so that has um, some Concords in it that um, his family planted back in the 1860s. Okay. And then it has um, Fredonia grapes that my great-grandparents planted. And then um, some Noiré grapes that my my dad planted so it's now your grandfather comes here and was it a tiny little plot or was it a sizable chunk of land um, even back then yeah they planted a smaller uh vineyard to start and it was mostly uh grapes that were used that they sold as fresh fruit for the fresh fruit market right and that was literally just that it wasn't even was it juice at that point yet no really? not really juice at that point he did make some wine he did. Um, we did see his name listed in a directory from the 1800s of winemakers in the eastern United States. Actually, we had put his label on our Rufus Red wine, and then we got thinking, uh-oh, what if he was a teetotaler and he's <laughs> rolling over in his grave? <laughs> but we did find that right, he was right. a Right, right, yeah, because you don't want to give him a, a posthumous <laughs> yeah. uh, reputation. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, he's like, I lived a good life, <laughs> yeah. and now you're soiling my <laughs> reputation. Uh, from the grave. <laughs> That's no good. Um, now, is your family's house still here on the property? Do you guys still, like, do your parents live on the property? My still? parents live um, at the end of the property, and I live next door. So, yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and over the years, uh, as he was planting his graves, uh, because the Concord grave was popular mm -hmm. here, so uh, Welch's comes in. Now he's selling to Welch's, I could imagine, at one point, right? Yeah, um, yeah, and we continue to sell a lot of grapes for juice, um, as well as what we use for our own winery and then what we sell you to do. other wineries. So, yeah. and, but that's an important part of your business, too, right? Um, w w selling the grapes, um, yeah, to other, to the juice processors. And I mean, that's been the wineries. staple mm -hmm. of the, do we call it a farm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's been a staple Farmer vineyards. Mm -hmm. since yeah. your grandpa was yep. here. So, I mean, that's really like what you guys do. Now, who's the one who started doing the wine? Well, there must have been um, one day when somebody's like, we got all this beautiful wine. Or maybe you were making it privately. Yeah, my, my parents had kind of played with the idea of opening a winery for quite some time. And I was interested in it, too. I was going to grad school at the time, so I did my thesis on um, winery marketing, and my parents okay. were still kind of playing around with that um, idea of possibly um, opening a winery, and then it kind of all came together. Oh, that's awesome. There. So did you go to school for marketing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did you, but I mean, did you, because you didn't think you were going to come back to the No, farm. not necessarily, no. Now you're the sixth generation in total, but right. second generation of the winemaking. Yeah. If you can have that generation learn to market properly, because uh -huh. you need the first to kind of invent the products, right. get it going. But that second generation is crucial mm -hmm. because you can now take this and now you can use your skill and your acumen to market. Expand it. That's yep. awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Your parents must be thrilled that yeah. you have like, the right degree for the business. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you're going to choose anything. Right. 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 And who better than somebody in the family and somebody, you're the generation to take this over after Definitely. your parents. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, but the winemaking was started with your parents, yes. not your grandpa. What was the first wine you guys manufactured? Actually, the very first wine we made was our Rufus Red, which is named after my great great grandfather. So there you go. Okay. Yep. And um, we started. I think when we opened, we had five different wines, and then we've really expanded from there, and we're at close to twenty-five different wow. wines. Wow. So we like to make sure we have something for everyone. We have great dry wines. We have great sweet wines. We have reds and whites and. Um, Tasting is a big part of the job <laughs> and <laughs> seeing, is, right? um, you know, where we want to go with different wines and what we want our end product to be. But that's the, I think probably one of the most fun aspects of this business is the freedom that you'll have to be creative and explore mm -hmm. and just see like what sticks 
And what do we like? And what can we do with this yep. grape? Mm -hmm. Now, do you ever import grapes to mix with your own? We or? use all local grapes. That's awesome. Great wine is made in the vineyard, and we really like to see where our grapes are coming from. And Farm to um, table. It's a yep. big deal. The freshness of the product, you know, you, you have it here. Don't ruin the beauty mm -hmm. that is here inherent in the grape. Right? And right. that's what you're trying to capture. The product and the stewardship of the land here that I don't think you get in other industries. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. So now Rufus Red, then you expand to a couple more. Now you're at 25. Uh huh. Ice wine. So, yes, we make an ice wine, we make a traditional ice wine. Ice wine is made by allowing the grapes to stay on the vine past the normal harvest season, and they stay on the vine until they are completely frozen, like marbles, really? and then they are harvested in December, January, whenever that is that they are completely it, frozen that year. It's a peak year. thing again, right? We want maximum like, mm -hmm. hardness with the grape. Right. Does that, what does that do to the sugars, too? So what it does is, if you think about when you, when you eat a grape and you bite into it, there's a lot of water yep. in there. So if it's frozen, then all of that water is ice. And when you press it, it just gets discarded. And all you're really pressing out is this really concentrated, syrupy, um, almost like it's just the sugar and the flavor. It's, and then <laughs> it's you, uh, this, the sugar at the bottom of the bowl of the cereal. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, something like that. Syrupy. So it's really like this really sweet, really um, concentrated juice that then is uh, fermented into the wine. So um, it's a very special wine. It's great for for holidays and special occasions. And, um, and it's, it's something that's pretty unique. You can't do it everywhere. So um, I get a lot of, a lot of tourists um, come through the area, come into our tasting room and they ask about ice wine. Is that why and they're friends and fans? Everybody's like, what, what, who does that ice, uh, yeah, ice wine down there? Yeah, that's what that's everyone's sure. kind of knows a little bit about it. They don't always know exactly what it is or how it's made and they're really interested to learn about it. Do you know how was it, like who first, was this something it, like? It's a German, oh, originally okay. a German thing, um, but I don't know okay. exactly the history of it. But that's where it's sourced. Yeah. Was. Mm -hmm. um, so now 25 wines, including the ice wines. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, I mean, the facility here is just beautiful. So when Thank did you. this all come together? Um, 12 years. Wow. So, mm -hmm. so it's, so, uh, it has a grow. Or 11 or it, years. Are we looking at the same building that you, it was initially, or is it changed? We have grown? expanded. Yeah. Um, we have built on for mostly for storage and production, uh, space. And then okay. we've added the pavilion. Yeah. Uh, the pavilion is great mm -hmm. actually. Oh, so that's brand new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's a natural progression of your business, right? Yep. I mean, now we mm -hmm. can do events here and you, how hard was it to figure out where you were going to put it? Was it difficult or was it easy? Actually, we've done for, um, for several years now, we have done a dinner in our vineyards, um, either once or twice a year, depending on the year. Um, and so it was always kind of alongside the vineyards. And then we had this idea, well, what if we took out some grapes mm -hmm. and set it up where it has grapes on three sides? And um, so that's what we did. We had a tent and we did that for several several years. And then that's kind of made sense is where to you put saw the pavilion. That. So, so it was it's, already. Yeah. So it's a, surrounded by three side, on three sides by grapes. So yeah, we did take out some grapes. Um, we do bus tours. We do lots of different events throughout the year. We have special um, dinners. We have just some fun events like a um, a trick or treat for grown ups. It's, you do. Um, you have a trick or treat. Yeah, yeah, so I've never have, heard of a trick or treat for grown ups. <laughs> yeah, so people just come in, they, they dress up, they say trick or treat, they get a free wine tasting. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> that's a lot of fun. Yeah. We have horse and carriage rides tours of the vineyards do. for harvest. We've won all kinds of awards. Most of our wines, if not all of them, have won different awards through the years. Um, one thing we are especially proud of in uh, 2016, we were named New York Winery of the Year by the New York Wine and Grape Foundation. That's why I asked. <laughs> you followed along perfectly. Yeah, exactly. That's a big deal. We have, we have wines really in all kinds of different styles and kind of for every taste. Our reds, whites, and blues is our best seller. It's a sweet rosé, but then we've got, you know, great dry reds. We've got a great Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, we have uh, sparkling Riesling. We have uh, port-style wines. We have 
a little bit of everything for all all different styles. Come in and play. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. And just see. Yep. And that's part of part of how we landed on the name Liberty is we I was we gonna, want everyone to have, be at liberty you, yeah. to to um, pick the wines that they like best. I was going to ask you that. Like, what is it? We have um, kind of our rock and roll series, which is our sweeter wines. We have Purple Haze, um, White Side of the Moon, and awesome. then the Lucy's in the really? Sky. And know. that was um, also named because Rufus, who um, I mentioned, is my great great grandfather playing our first vineyards. His wife's name was Lucinda. Aww. And then um, she passed away and he married another Lucinda. You're kidding. And then my aunt is also named awesome Lucinda. Lucinda. <laughs> and my dad likes to call her Lucy because just yeah. to be an annoying little brother. So that's awesome. Though. Yeah. So, so that's just, why she's on the label. It's appropriate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I didn't so the rock and roll series, how many more do you have? You have Purple Haze, Lucy in the Sky. And uh, White Side of the Moon. So just those nice, mm-hmm. nice, nice, nice. Do you foresee, because uh, now the pavilion's a big addition, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that opens up a world of opportunity yeah. for you. Weddings and anniversaries and yeah. family reunions and corporate right events. Right now, we're just mostly using it for our own events that we're putting on um, and tastings and special things. Um, we right. kind of see where, where it leads. That's or, Yeah, mm-hmm. it's organic. you got to yep. let it grow and kind of yep. find its way. Is the um, gazebo new, too? We've had the gazebo. Actually, um, it was, it's been moved a few times, but we moved it there recently. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. perfect. Sure. So we have wine tasting every day. We're open all year, except for a few major holidays. People love to come in and kind of um, sample things and maybe sometimes try things that they they don't, wouldn't normally taste or that they haven't had before sure um it's a lot of fun liberty vineyards wine club we actually have three different clubs we have a dry a sweet and then a mixed club because we know everyone's tastes are different um so with each club each quarter we put together a package and um, our winemakers our owners kind of sit down and um, come up with a package around a theme or around the season and then um, so for the sweet and dry clubs you get three bottles of wine for the mixed club you get four bottles because it's two two from the dry club and two from the sweet and price difference um so the price is you're really just paying for the wine so it does vary a little bit from quarter to quarter um and you're just paying for the wine but you get a free gift each quarter you get wine glasses just for signing up you get free tastings um, in our tasting room up to twice a month for up to four people so you can bring a couple friends with you and um that's awesome. lots of other nice benefits sure, throughout the year right, mm-hmm. right. but that's a really solid yep. upfront package right. to begin with. yeah and then it, you just start paying for the wine and the shipping if you are having it shipped to your door a lot of people actually just come and pick it up at the winery because okay. it's a lot of fun sure. to come and we have pickup parties each quarter where people come and they pick up their wine and they have some food and some wine and that was your idea so um the first day when you sign up you can actually take you can pay for and take home the last package that came out. So if you come in July, but you really want to take home the June package, you can pay for that and take awesome. it home with you that day. Or you can wait until the next one comes out in September. Yeah, um, your choice. Yeah. Yep, your choice. And you can sign up in the tasting room or you can sign up on our website, um, which is libertywinery.com. We're in a number of liquor stores. Um, the full list is, again, on our website. Um, now all of the liquor stores carry all of the wines. Yes, we are in, in a number of, of liquor stores in the region. Now, uh, online, do you guys have a site where I can actually order pretty much anything? We do. We can ship to most states. Um, uh, I think it's about 35 states that we can ship to. Awesome. Um, so that's, that's available to us too. Mm-hmm. And that uh, changes per season, obviously, with what you have in stock and what... Uh, It'll change a little, a little bit. bit. A lot. The, the main wines will be the same, but we do have some that we uh, may s- sell out of from time to time. And then how much of your stock is online? Is it most everything? All of the wines. Oh, they Just are. about all so of the wines are available on, oh, online. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, they may not be available to every state. Right, but, they right. Are but at, at least yep. it's there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, 35 is enough. Yeah, 37. <laughs> I don't know exactly, but it's, yeah. It's good. Then this is our wine library. So we take vintages that we're sold out of and we put them back here 
And then... Um, These are so super special wines. Yeah, and then every once in a while we'll have a library tasting where we will open up some of those old vintages and have our winemaker come in and talk about them a little bit. So when you have a tasting, like, for the library, that's it, right? You're using that bottle. Yeah, yeah. So it's a ticketed event, and if we... You know, usually we have a few bottles. We can do it a few times. They must be popular. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, the real, especially, especially like for the dry red wines. It's usually 